You've made it to Cairo Hustle. Sit back and learn from the greatest influencers in the profession on the world's number one chiropractic podcast. This episode is brought to you by Imaging Services, Cairo Health USA, Cairo Moguls, Chiropractic Rocks, The Goodman Factor, True Weight Solutions, The 100 Year Lifestyle, Pure Cairo Notes, Titronics, Ultimate Entrepreneur Opportunity, and Cairo Pro Accounting. Let's hustle. Hey guys, welcome to episode 233 of the Cairo Hustle podcast. I am your co-host, Luke Millette, and here's your host, Jim Chester. So today we had the opportunity of interviewing Dr. Ted Korn, and if you want to know about the end of the world in chiropractic, stay tuned. All right, we are live here. Awesome. Um, so today we have the... Um, opportunity to have Ted Corrin on as our guest tonight and uh, it wasn't anything short of a miracle to get this episode scheduled and get you on the air with us today and uh, this is episode 233 and we just really want to give you a a warm welcome to the Cairo Hustle podcast and thank you for uh, sticking by us tonight. Well thank you, thanks for your patience. Boy, this was not easy. <laughs> There's technical issues, but we got I think, it. Thank you. I think like they say, Ted, done is better than perfect. And just getting you on for our audience is a big hurdle for us. You are our second interview of 2021, and we're more than thrilled to have you on our show. Thank you. That's very kind of you. And as we lead into this episode, if you can uh, give people a snapshot of your chiropractic story, by the way, your bio was awesome. I've read it a few times and the story about how you first got into chiropractic by a chiropractor helping you as a young man. I think that that story is very timely, especially today. And especially after you just shared with me what you just read off of your computer. Um, Maybe you can just tell people your chiropractic story and what influenced you to become a chiropractor. Okay, will do. Uh, My uh, family's, uh, my grandmother actually never really liked medicine. And she was like the family doctor. And uh, whenever me and my brothers were sick, she would come to our door, the door of our apartment in Brooklyn, with the scariest thing you'd ever seen, an enema bulb. (laughs) Oh, my God. And we would uh, suddenly, our fevers were gone because we would hide. (laughs) We'd hide in the bathroom, under the beds, in the closets, anywhere we could. But Grandma could find us always. (laughs) And the worst part about it was that the ne- our fevers would break almost immediately, and the next day we'd have to go to school. So uh, <laughs> when I was uh, about nine years old, I got pneumonia, and uh, they were very worried about me. We had been living in our summer home in New Jersey because summertime, and uh, I was brought back to Brooklyn and stayed overnight. Well, stayed there, and my grandmother would take care of me. And she had the MD come, and the MD gave me a shot. I have no idea what it was. And then he gave me another shot two days later. They made house calls those days. The second shot, I believe, nicked the sciatica nerve. And I was uh, I was in horrible pain, and I was uh, paralyzed on one side from the waist down. And then... Uh, when he came the next time to give me a shot, my grandmother said to him, uh, wait, wait, first, because he would come very early, right, wake me up. So she'd say, wait, walk for the doctor, she'd say to me. And I, I looked at her as if to say, are you kidding me? But she said, walk, walk for the doctor. So I tried to get out of bed and I fell to the floor. And then I'd pull myself up on the dressers, holding on to the handles, whatever. And the... I was in a lot of pain and I could barely move. And then she started screaming at the doctor. What did you do to my grandson? What did you do to my grandson? And she grabbed him, um, literally grabbed him and threw him out of the apartment. And then she called the local chiropractor, Dr. Friedland, who came over and worked on me. And suddenly I could walk again. He came back a couple of days later and my pneumonia after one adjustment, one more. Uh, my pneumonia was gone. And she, uh, I remember I told this story uh, to a group of old timers years ago, because I had gotten a patient who had pneumonia. 
and uh, she was just came just came back from the hospital where she had x-rays taken and uh, one of my it's actually a friend's daughter and I um, came by and did a house call saw her a few times and the uh, her pneumonia disappeared just like with me and one old timer in the back of the room raised in his hand and said you know in my day it only took one adjustment to get rid of pneumonia <laughs> so I said, okay, oh, well, she had a lot of antibiotics. He said, okay, I'll give you the extra visit or two. Very generous. So that's really what got me interested in, in chiropractic and nat- natural healing. Although it took many years before I decided to go to chiropractic school. I had other interests. My parents wanted me to be an MD. And my two younger brothers followed in my footsteps and became MDs. The only thing is that I wasn't on those footsteps anymore. So I, two, young, two of my three younger brothers are MDs, and uh, I went to Sherman College. So uh, I graduated Sherman. I was class valedictorian. I came to Pennsylvania. Uh, I started a chiropractic college, Adio, or the Pennsylvania College, which had lived for about 20 years, I'd say, before the CCE destroyed it. Um, politics. It was too bad it was a really good school, and it was nearby, which I thought was wonderful. And uh, then I, I was teaching there also, and then I started um, Corin Publications, which became the most popular patient education resource in the chiropractic profession, sold over 100 million patient brochures, and we had all kinds of other things. So it's still around, corinpublications.com, for anyone interested. So that's going on, still ongoing. And then I started, uh, I was in a bad accident. And I, and again, I was, I was disabled. I, was, I had a concussion. It was really bad. And I couldn't walk more than a few feet at a time some days. And I wasn't able to use my hands. My hands were in such pain, such weakness, that I actually gave up my license to practice. I, I put it on ice. You could do that in Pennsylvania. And for 10 years, I traveled around trying to get help. My pain was intense and constant. And I saw between 40 and 50 uh, healthcare practitioners, mostly chiropractors, but also osteopaths, acupuncturists, medical doctors, uh, body workers of all kinds. Every technique chiropractors had, you could think of, I had it done often by the experts or developers. I was still a mess and getting worse. I had nowhere else to look. So finally, I decided to figure out a way to to work on myself. And I figured out how to do it. And exactly, I located the subluxations everybody else had been missing for 10 years. And uh, I worked on myself using a little instrument. And after five days, I was all better. That's after 10 years of suffering. And my wife had migraines for 12 years. And I showed her and one tap really. And she never had, she has not had a migraine since. So then I started to uh, demonstrate my work at chiropractic uh, seminars where I was invited to teach and at schools. And the interest is in it was so great, uh, we started teaching it. And I've taught over uh, 4,000 people so far, uh, what has now become known as KST or Corin specific technique. So that's my story. And I'm still involved in the profession, still writing. I have a blog and I'm doing, uh, um, you know, writing, lecturing, teaching and doing research. So I, I don't know. Is that enough? No, it's a fascinating uh, story for us and our audience to be able to hear what you're where you've come from and what you're doing today. Um, corn specific technique. Can you maybe explain a little bit more on that to the people that will be listening? Because I know within chiropractic, there's quite a few techniques and maybe you can kind of uh, let people know what the corn specific technique entails. And I know that you said that you um, went the journey to find all the masters and now you, now, now you, now you've created a technique that helps other people. Well, yeah. I mean, I did it out of desperation. I was deteriorating. I didn't want to wind up with surgery or painkillers or cortisone, whatever, and or become just remain disabled. So, uh, what I people say, what do you, what is this? I say, well, 
uh, I'm able to find, or we're able to find, what everybody else misses. We're, we're able to locate the hidden subluxations, the hidden stresses um, that, are, <clears throat> that are blocking, preventing healing. And um, we've had people from uh, who had been experts in almost every technique in chiropractic say they found a home with corn-specific technique, KST. We put it all together. We're able to incorporate any of the other techniques. It's very, it's a big umbrella, you could say. And we're able to locate uh, things on many levels. For example, D.D. Palmer said that the three causes of dis-ease was thoughts, toxins, and trauma, the three T's. And we address all three with KST. Going to great detail, you can very quickly and easily locate the subluxations everyone else misses. And they might be physical, they might be emotional, they might be toxic, it doesn't matter. You can locate them and address them usually very, very quickly and easily. And I've got people who now are calling me from all over the world for care because, or for consultations, because using KST, we've explored cancer, uh, Alzheimer's, Lou Gehrig's disease, as well as chronic illnesses, uh, autism, etc. And this is a real breakthrough in the healing arts. And uh, thankfully, it's been growing and growing. And the uh, chiropractic profession is uh, not the only profession I teach. Because KST is a protocol that can be used by any professional, no matter what you're doing. Chiropractors can better learn how to locate verbal subluxations. Um, acupuncturists can locate the, the points needing needling. Uh, by the way, you locate the subluxations. Not only do you locate subluxations, but the order they need correcting. And you have to keep an open mind and let the body tell you where it wants to be corrected. Um, you might say that you have to humble yourself before the wisdom of the body. This is not purely an intellectual approach. This is uh, an approach based on respecting the wisdom of the body, the innate, the innate intelligence of the body, and in a sense asking, what should I do? What should I address? And the response has been absolutely amazing. And I've got patients <coughs> and people that need care that I probably never would have expected I'd be seeing and taking care of. And I take care of um, all age groups from, uh, well, pregnancy, from newborns to the elderly. You can even work on people in comas with this work. And uh, also, and also I take care of uh, dogs and cats and animals other, and other life forms, such as uh, teenagers. <laughs> So I, I don't know if that answers your question. No, I think it's a really good explanation of uh, a technique and your journey. Um, there's so much about chiropractic that our audience understands. And I think it's really cool to have you on as our guest today to talk about the intricacies of the chiropractic profession and the healing journey. And I think so many times people come into some type of desperation where they've gone down the medical rabbit hole and they're like, I need a chiropractor. They don't know what type of chiropractor they need. They just end up going to a chiropractor because they're like, well, I don't want the ones that twist and crack and pop. I want the ones that use the instruments or they're like, I don't trust somebody if they don't use their hands. So mm -hmm. I think that there's a lot to be said about your technique when you're saying that it has an application for many different um, techniques to use it as a, um, a model within it. Oh, yeah, you can use any technique with KST. Um, the, 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 the benefits of KST is the doctor is able to locate the subluxations uh, immediately and in different postures. Not many people know that subluxations are posture specific. What that means is that you might see somebody uh, Stand, you might check them actually when they're laying down. Most people check people when they're laying down on the table. But if they were in a car accident, subluxations that are really important may not surface when they're laying down. It'll surface when they're sitting in the position they were injured. Um, and this is true of all kinds of postures. and pro we, we, That's why we work so well with athletes, because you can locate the subluxations that are occurring in different parts of the golf swing or the tennis swing, 
or kicking a football or throwing a baseball or batting. Doesn't matter. We're able to locate and correct subluxations as a person is moving. And the postural component is something that is works perfectly with KST. I think we're the ones that really discovered it. Uh, although I have been influenced by, by others, other techniques, no one really corrected people in the posture they were moving at in this way. And uh, posture, by the way, posture is not just physical, it's also emotional. You can clear a person out, no subluxations. Then they think of their ex-wife. And they're a mess. Uh, and you, so what do you do? You correct while they're thinking of their ex-wife and you will break that mind-body link. Uh, same thing is happening with uh, dyslexia, for example. We, we get kids better from dyslexia sometimes with one visit. And even adults, if they've had it their whole lives, uh, learning disorders, dyslexia, dysgraphia, dyscalculia, which is difficult with math, etc. Dysgraphia means difficult writing. Dyslexia is difficult reading. So if someone has dyslexia, what will bring out their subluxations? Reading. So you, hand, you clear a, a person who has dyslexia out. They're perfectly fine. Then you hand them a book. They lock up. You correct the subluxations that, that come out while they're reading. Suddenly they can read better. They can do math better. They can write better. Whatever their disability is, you're breaking an adverse reflex. I call it a, a pattern interrupt. And this is something we do with KST all the time. And it could be done on a physical or an emotional level. And there are many applications to it. You have to realize that the reason why chiropractors um, are not getting the results they often should is because they're not looking deep enough into the body. They're not working with the body. They're not putting people in the, in the posture of subluxation or the posture of stress. And it could be an emotional posture as well. There's a neuroemotional technique, NET, that deals with emotions, which is incredible. Developed by Scott Walker, who is a very, uh, very strong influence on me. There are other techniques that you can use um, that there are KST you can use to get rid of allergies or phobias or uh, deal with vision or singing, snoring, <laughs> all kinds of conditions and problems. We, we have something called the panic pattern where the person is in a state of hyper alertness and it could be from childhood. It, you don't, it doesn't matter. You know, the body doesn't have any time limit. So you can actually locate where there's a stress pattern and ask the body in a sense, what age was the person when they were having this problem? And they could think about that trauma, that emotional trauma while you're working on them and it releases it. Remember, I remember once, uh, oh, I tell people when they come to a KST seminar to bring any bad habits they may have. And we work on them for their bad habits, nail biting, um, Cough, excessive coffee drinking. We've, you know, if people are addicted. This is an incredibly good technique for that as well. We break the subluxations or we interrupt them associated with addictions, for example. Uh, chiropractors have much more power than they realize. We just have to be aware that we can do this, that the mind body complex uh, develops, we call them subluxations, others can call them blockages or. Uh, distortions or, or imbalances. Uh, I think of it as an adverse neurological feedback loop. Your nervous system is going round and round and round and not breaking a bad feedback. Uh, you have a bad reflex, you might say. It could be a physical or an emotional reflex. And what we do is a pattern interrupt. I think that's what chiropractic has always been. It's interrupting an adverse neurological reflex, an adverse pattern, and that, that interruption helps the body reboot or reset or rebalance or reintegrate the uh, new energy so that the person will start healing better. Uh, with KST, um, we adjust discs, for example, um, find parts of the body that are out that people may have no idea are causing their problems. Sometimes you work on a person because they have a, a problem one place, but you work on them in another place because the body is interconnected in many mysterious ways. We have a very mysterious body. So um, 
I'm throwing a lot of things out. I hope some of them make sense to you. So what would it look like if an office wanted to adopt the KST technique for their well, own use? Yeah. What would they what would they have to do? Is there a process they have to go through? Is there training? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we have a home study program. Now, uh, this time, we're not coming to as many seminars, unfortunately. So we have a home study. We also have live seminars. Our next one will be in Philadelphia, uh, third week of April. And you go on our website, coreandspecifictechnique.com. Uh, you'll see uh, our schedule. We're going to be in St. Louis. And I know we're, we're scheduled for Las Vegas and Portland. Um, we'll just see if it happens. But I know we're having at least two or three seminars in Philadelphia. Um, I, we might be in Georgia. I don't know. I'll have to look at my schedule myself. But if anyone is interested, they can immediately get our home study program. And it's sort of like a package deal. You get the home study and then you come to a live seminar. I recommend it because um, we give a lot of information. And if a person just goes to a live seminar, a lot of times it's too much. They have to start integrating the terminology and just the ideas because KST is really uh, philosophy based. You have to really understand philosophy, the chiropractic philosophy, the vitalistic philosophy we have. So I recommend people do the home study, get comfortable with the terminology and everything because the home study is very complete and then come to a live seminar and it locks everything in. So uh, thanks for asking, that's a good question. Um, and the home study is really cool. I remember years ago, I think it was the first time I did a seminar in Chicago. This, uh, what was it? Oh, I, I saw this older man there and I'd never recognized him before. Okay, first seminar. During the, and then I, I tell everybody I did break them, start working on each other. He is amazing. He is so fast and smooth and he's breezing through everything. So I go up to him and I say, I don't recognize you. Have you what other seminars have you been to? He said, oh, uh, I just did your home study. And then, you know, I've been practicing. I said, well, you must have a really large practice to take care of so many people, you know, to get so good at it. He said, oh, I'm not a doctor. He said, I just took this to take care of my children and grandchildren, my family members and myself and my wife. And so I was very impressed. Uh, yeah, you can learn this work. And I do let non-chiropractors learn it because there's no law against working on yourself. Not yet. Huh. I'm going to have to take that. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully Luke, hopefully Luke becomes proficient. <laughs> sorry, what? Hopefully Luke learns this and can become proficient. <laughs> well, you're more than welcome, Luke. It'd be great to have you. Uh, we um, we have found that is all it takes is practicing and studying a little. It's really uh, a very... Uh, Somebody called it an innate driven technique. It is merely respecting the body and letting it tell you what it wants done rather than you being intellectual and deciding what you think you should do. You know what to do. You just ask the body. And uh, it really takes a lot of pressure off the doctors. Thank God they have enough pressure as it is. But it, it takes a lot of stress off the doctors. Um, and they, uh, they don't feel the pressure of having to know everything. And we found something very interesting. When you're working on somebody and you're correcting the subluxations, wherever they may be, sometimes the body says stop. It's as if it's, uh, it needs time to reboot or, or reset or integrate what you've done to it. Just don't keep pounding away on people. You have to... Sometimes the best thing a doctor can do is nothing at all and wait and let the body do its thing. And then it opens up and says, okay, now I can, now you can do some more. So this is, I tell people that you're always dancing with your, your patients, but they're leading. So you are just letting the body, letting the patient guide you. And it's the best way to work with someone. I hope so that makes sense. I threw out a lot of stuff. Yeah, no, that, that's a good uh, that's a good phrase that you have. Do you have any other favorite like mantras or quotes yeah. or phrases like that? Oh Lord, um, oh, I do, 
I'm sorry, what? <laughs> top three. Top three. I don't. I don't think in that way. Um, uh, I just want people, like I said, when I teach this work, uh, you have to just sit back and respect the wisdom of the body, not try to be smart and be humble and ask lots of questions. One of the worst things I've discovered is the patients that are the most difficult have the most to teach you. And of course, that makes them the most difficult. And, you know, it could drive you crazy, but every patient to me, is a, a research tool in a sense. Tool sounds like a bad word. Is a research subject. I feel like every person is brought to me for for me to learn from and to help them at the same time. So, uh, and I take as much time as I want to with patients. Uh, KST doctors, there are many seeing well over a hundred people a day, and you can easily see that. And when I go to uh, you know, some communities where they have 10, 12, 14 children, um, after about, after a few hours, you've seen well over 100 people. But um, you can see a lot of people, if you like, with KST, and I, I, and I recommend it. Give the patient what's, what they need. But you can also have them come back, you know, and see them later. The important thing is you don't impose your will. You know, well, I learned this technique, therefore I'm going to do this on the patient. No, you might, you can ask the patient's body if different techniques are appropriate. I have nothing wrong with that. I, that's a wonderful thing. And we have people from every field you can think of learning KST. Um, we have dentists coming, holistic dentists, usually, um, acupuncturists, body workers, mostly chiropractors, of course. But, uh, us, you know, we've had MDs coming, um, nutritionists, whatever. It makes every technique work better, every healing art work better when you respect the wisdom of the body. Super uh, fundamental for people to understand that the innate force inside the body is uh, something that needs attention. And it's not always a physical condition that people need care for. And I really believe that what you said earlier is about thoughts, traumas, and toxins is most people um, look at chiropractic as a physical modality. And they don't realize that a lot of the problems with people are really emotional. And it's really a, uh, like you said earlier, it could be an addiction um, that people are dealing with or some type of a disability. And I think that that sometimes creates uh, augmentations in people's postures and it can uh, change people's physiology. So I think it's really cool that you've learned how to basically have a body code system where you can look and see where people have dysfunction within their energy level and where that's coming from to find out where the primary is to be adjusted. And oh, I think that that's really cool. Primary is the key. It could be uh, it could be nutritional on some people. They could be dehydrated. They could have mm -hmm. had scars that are ruining their lives. A scar can mess you up as much as an atlas subluxation, depending on where the scar is. There could be uh, dropped organs. Uh, actually, we address all this stuff with KST. Well, uh, it's, more, it's many, much more. I, I'm going to switch gears a little bit on you. Um, I, I, I want to test your memory. Uh, do you remember the, the first time you met Luke and I? No. <laughs> good, good answer. We, 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 met, we met you over at the Chiropractic Matters Conference over in uh, Oxford, England um, no. back oh. in 2016. Oh, wow. You know, I remember now. You had a booth there? We were right next to you. Yes. Oh, thank you. Please forgive me. My God. You've made it to Cairo Hustle. Sit back and learn from the greatest influencers in the profession on the world's number one chiropractic podcast. This episode is brought to you by Imaging Services, Cairo Health USA, Cairo Moguls, Chiropractic Rocks, The Goodman Factor, True Weight Solutions, The 100 Year Lifestyle, Pure Cairo Notes, Titronics, Ultimate Entrepreneur Opportunity, and Cairo Pro Accounting. Let's hustle.
Uh, you're right. It's years ago, though. So yeah, yeah I remember. Wow, that is so cool. And I think <laughs> I think it was your wife who was telling me she was an extra in Dawn of the Dead. You're right. She was. She was. A <laughs> wow, you have a good memory. Not like me. For some things. <laughs> For some well, the the most important thing was is we remembered you. And, oh. <laughs> and, 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 we remembered the instance where you checked us and you had your instrument there with you and uh, you were scanning my body and you're like above Atlas check, primary check, secondary check. And you're like doing this like type of uh, body scan. I mean, I've never had done before. So I was fascinated when I met you and that's why later down um, the timeline with you, it's really great to have you on our show just because I knew that from when we first met you that you were doing some really amazing stuff for the chiropractic profession. I've talked to other people since then that really respected your work. And it was an honor for me to be able to finally get you to say yes and to connect with you to get you to be on our show. Because I think that um, in a timeline of life, um, it's really nice to be able to connect with people that have some special things about them. And every chiropractor we've had a chance to interview and to be a part of their life, we're creating this amazing ecosystem of chiropractic stories and really documenting the chiropractic profession with all these amazing uh, stories of chiropractors. And, you know, today's our time. Today's our opportunity to have you on. And I think that that's the really beautiful thing about what Luke and I have been doing for the past uh, five years, um, specifically with Cairo Hustle the past three years, but we've been cataloging and time capsuling this chiropractic narrative and these chiropractic stories. And I think that's really special. And uh, to be able to share your story and to connect the dots from back in England. <laughs> that was cool. I had no idea. England. Uh, I remember that seminar. Wow. <laughs> that was a while, wasn't it? You're that was a nice place, wasn't it? That was a rather nice hotel. Um, it was a very nice place and it was a McTimony event. Right, McTimony. I've lectured for McTimony. Actually, it's because of McTimony that I started KST, started teaching it. Um, I was invited to speak at McTimony and do 12 hours. So I go there, I'm doing my 12-hour thing. And then they come up to me and say, by the way, our speaker couldn't make it after you. Could you do another four hours? <laughs> and I thought, do you have any idea how long it takes to do a, a one-hour presentation? You want me to do four hours? Oh, God. And then I thought, hey, maybe I'll show everybody here this new stuff I've been doing because I've been wondering if, if it's learnable, if I could teach it. So I did my first KST seminar at McTemony. And I was getting emails of over the next week about all these incredible healings that were occurring. And they didn't, I barely taught them a lot, but it was enough. And stories about people who couldn't walk are now walking and all these pains going away and the bodies, blah, blah, blah. Oh, it was wonderful. And then I said to my wife, I said, okay, I can teach this. Let's do a seminar. So yeah, McTemony was a, an inspiration to me in that way. And that's just it is timing is everything. Mm -hmm. And some people rise to the occasion and some people rise to power. And I think that Luke and I have been really doing the work um, behind the scenes for the chiropractic profession and connecting these dots and these stories and, you know, building this narrative. And I, that's the work I'm really proud of is being able to go on this journey and to be able to become so familiar in the chiropractic space and to be able to build that as everybody in the chiropractic or anybody in marketing, they're all like, well, you have to be known, you have to be liked and you have to be trusted. And to come into a chiropractic profession where th those, um, are not the highest level like uh, attributes for most people that do marketing, be known, liked, and trusted. It's really nice that Luke and I could actually fill that void and become known, liked, and trusted within a chiropractic space. And what what's happening today is, you know, it's, it, it's mind blowing to me that we get a chance to help your message get to more people. And it's really an honor to me to be able to do what we do because um, chiropractors are, are very, uh, unique, uh, group of doctors that, um, are very times misunderstood. So it's really cool that we understand the lexicon so well 
and the tenets of the profession and the historical resonance of the profession that we can talk to you and other practitioners and share your stories and not skip a beat. So yeah, it's, it's, it's fun for me to do this and to hold this space for chiropractors, because that's another thing is to hold safe space for people that are highly intelligent is um, yeah, that's, that's a challenge. Yeah, really. I, I think, it's, I think it's wonderful. What you're saying is to be commended. Thank you. We love it. So how do you think the world would change if everyone started getting adjusted regularly? Well, it's, it's, it would definitely be to have a lot less drugs and would have a lot of healthier kids. Uh, but more than that, chiropractic is a philosophy of natural healing. It's a philosophy. It's a, an empirical or vitalistic philosophy. I start all my seminars um, with a philosophical basis because then there would be uh, kids wouldn't get vaccinated. So we wouldn't have autism. People would eat better. It would be, uh, you know, be without vaccines. There wouldn't, we wouldn't barely see any allergies or asthma. So it's not a matter of just adjusting, which is very important, but letting people know that there's, as they say, a subluxation above Atlas, a mental concept that we need to take drugs to be healthy or that we need to take vaccines to be healthy instead of just keeping our nerve energies clear and eating right and taking care of our relationships. This is very, very important, and this is not being done. And people are so disconnected from themselves and so, I don't know, what's the word, lonely? They're not connected to their inner wisdom. They've given up their power to doctors. They've given up their power to others, to, to the experts. And the experts have been, in terms of the biological sciences, horrible. That medicine is the, as one MD said, called it Emmanuel Traskin, you know, he gave this lecture and he said, medicine was the fastest growing failing business in America. And I guess to that, we'd add many countries because right now we're seeing this incredible worship of the experts and we're losing our freedoms under the guise of protection. You want to be safe? Um, got to do this, got to do that, got to wear a mask, got to social distance, got to lock down. It's ridiculous. It makes no sense. It's never been done in the history of the world. This COVID thing, first time in the history of the world, of humanity, that healthy people are quarantined. Where in the world did they get that idea from? And it's not working. It doesn't work. It never worked. And it never will work. And we have a confluence of three totalitarian industries that are destroying society. Um, we know politicians are love power. That's the first one. Second one is the medical profession, which wants to control our lives. And the third one is the media, wants to control how we think. And the three of them have joined together and are destroying everyone. It's absolutely horrible. And it's uh, and anyone who dissents, any MDs, any politicians, any media that dissent are destroyed, closed down, canceled. Uh, censored. So it's a real bad situation and it's getting worse. And I, I don't think the chiropractic profession has stood up to it at all, not in any kind of organized way. They have just either been silent or even accepted the medical model. Both are, are tragedies. So I'm sorry, I can't tell you any happy news, but this is exactly what's going on, <clears throat> going on right now. And it's, it's, it's terrible. I'm, I'm ashamed of our profession. And where do you see chiropractic going in the next 20 years or so? In the, into the toilet. Straight, straight down into the medical model, just like the osteopaths were destroyed by uh, medicine. So the chiropractic is. Um, Sherman College that I went to prides itself on being philosophical. They sent me their latest newsletter with kids in clinic wearing masks. At Life College, people have to wear masks. If these are our more philosophical schools. Where in the world are the other schools? I'll tell you where. They're medical. Over half the chiropractic schools, and this is even before the COVID mentality, if over half the chiropractic schools 
require or recommend vaccines to go to school. And that's totally antithetical to the entire chiropractic philosophy and reason for being. So I see chiropractics becoming no more than backache therapy, drugless aspirin, and it's tragic. Just like uh, you see with osteopaths and some MDs and some chiropractors, there will be those who will be um, adhering to the original uh, philosophy, the original uh, approach of respecting the patient and not drugging them to death, but they will probably not be represented in the schools or the organizations and will be in the minority and chiropractic is probably uh, going to be gone by them. I told you this was not going to be a happy ending. And if somebody wakes up and says, damn it, let's do something about it, I'm with them. Uh, the federal government went after me in 1996 or 95, started a six and a half year legal battle to close down patient education. Federal Trade Commission went after me. Everyone said we would fail, that you couldn't fight the feds. We beat them. And we had a lot of chiropractors who helped. We started a legal defense fund. They donated to it. And it was just really wonderful. Um, and my attorney from that is still fighting for healthcare freedom. And we are actually going to start a uh, major lawsuit uh, for vaccination freedom. So you can say no. Uh, or that laws mandating vaccine, vaccines will be unconstitutional. So this is my new project. And I believe many chiropractors are very philosophical and still understand the philosophy and will join us. And many people who are chiropractic supporters will also join in. Uh, the majority probably will be wearing their masks and getting their vaccines. If not the majority, a good number. And that's the tragedy. So, but we're going to still keep fighting anyway, because uh, you don't give up, even if there's, because you know what's right. And that's why you keep fighting. Amen. 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 I, I, I commend you for being so um, forward with your, your views. And I've had this conversation time and time again with people. And I support and I mimic the same sentiment that you carry when it comes to the atrocity of the masking and the vaccine and the slippery slope within the chiropractic profession for not standing on one side of the line and straddling the line. And I think that, yeah, um, it's scary. For, all the, for all the work that we've done, people think that I'm a lunatic because I'm like, why would I want to wear a mask? I, I want to see people smile. Like I want to see people in their, in their full, you know, reverence for, for being alive. And I think what it does is it really, it, it changes the, the phys physiological structure of the way that people interact. And I think when you start changing the way that people interact, we're easier to dumb down and manipulate and be afraid of each other and everything around us. And I, <coughs> I, I, I actually follow the same way of thinking as you follow is yeah, we have to stand up for ourselves and re retain the the medical freedoms that we have, and we have to retain the the constitution rights that we have, and we have to retain freedoms of not only American law but of the world law. And you you've nailed it probably more clearly than anybody else I've ever talked to when you said they took the big three and put them against everything. They took the media, they took the medical, and they took the politicians and put them all on one team. And they're basically trying to stymie out anything that everyone would ever want to think or believe differently. Well, and sure. You can't, uh, you have to, there's a tremendous intolerance for people who want to live differently. And uh, whereas if somebody wants to wear a mask, I say, go ahead. I think it's stupid. I think you're being a, a sheep for believing is such a dumb philosophy, but go ahead. But if I don't want to wear a mask, people will want to attack me. What kind of tolerance is that? It's uh, because when people really don't understand what they're doing, they rely on hysteria and violence. 
and we were just going to happen I, earlier I, as we were uh, before the show i just read a headline just came out today that 55 people in the us have died from the covid shot uh, I, that number will increase dramatically and my guess is the numbers are probably much higher because um, they won't blame the deaths on covid all the time just like they never did you know, they one state said you wouldn't believe how many people who were shot really died of COVID, or many people who were killed in car accidents. They were determined to be COVID deaths, and this is a, a manipulation of the numbers of statistics, which is really a manipulation of the reality that people are listening to. The schools are horrible not just the chiropractic schools, but the general schools as well, the public schools, because they've been brainwashing people with a medical philosophy for a long time, which is essentially totalitarian uh, in its philosophical outlook. It wasn't supposed to be, but it's become that. And that's why totalitarian mentalities are taking hold in America. And this is really scary. So I'd like to thank you for giving me permission to speak and for being an open forum. And I hope you don't get censored. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. You're right. So well, over the course of your life, who have been some of your heroes or your inspirations? Like who, who has fired you up to do what you do? Oh, there's been wonderful people. Um, you know, I told you uh, Scott Walker, who developed a neuroemotional technique, NET. Uh, KST actually was originally inspired by by two uh, approaches, two techniques. One was uh, DNFT, Directional Non-Force Technique, by Richard Van Rump, who uh, I never met, but his uh, two of his teach who two of his students who are teaching it, Pat and Mike McLean, taught me DNFT, and I'll be, always be grateful to them for that. And also Spinal Column Stressology by Dr. Lowell Ward. Not many people have even heard of stressology, but Ward was absolutely brilliant. And he, uh, and I always credit my teachers. You have to credit your teachers. In the Talmud, it says, if you don't credit your sources, it's the same as theft. And so I like to say I'm inspired by many people. Um, in politics and economics, I have inspirations. Uh, I've always liked Thomas Sowell and uh, uh, Walter Williams and uh, the uh, free market people. Uh, who was the guy who did free, Friedman, Free to Choose? And, uh, you know, I, I like economics because it ties him with philosophy. And uh, I like watching Dennis Prager or listening to his shows. Um, I'm, I'm interested in freedom and uh tying in to this wonderful civilization we've created so that we don't lose it in these terrible times uh, with the COVID and the socialism uh, that we're staring at right now. So, um, yeah, those have been pretty much inspirations to me. And I've been inspired by almost every teacher and student I've had. I think I've learned more from my students than they've learned from me. Everyone well, has great ideas. If you had the opportunity to sit down and have dinner with uh, anyone in history, living, dead, real, fictitious, who would it be? Oh, my God. Well, I think uh, D.D. and B.J. Palmer, if they wouldn't keep fighting and yelling at each other, uh, they'd probably be a lot of fun. <laughs> they'd be great. A lot of my teachers who have sadly passed on, uh, Reggie Gold, Joe Felicia, they, these were wonderful people. I'd love to show them what I've discovered and what I've done and get their you – know, feedback on it and think, know what they think. Uh, they'd be characters, I'm sure. Of course, there are many historical, political, American and, and foreign leaders and, and thinkers and researchers I'd love to speak with. But in the chiropractic profession, I, I'd, li I'd like to have dinner with them. And uh, I'd even pick up the check. How do you like that? <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Th this, this realness from you. Um, is very timely. This um, information that you're sharing with us uh, is really from your heart. And I, I, I feel so sensitive and thankful that you're so open to share 
you know, the, the troubles that we're dealing with right now. Um, and you're able to lean back on, you know, the historical resonance of the people that came before you. And uh, my, my next question for you is there's going to be people coming after you, not in a malicious sense, but the next generation of chiropractors will be coming after you. If uh, there was a piece of advice you could give to a um, upstart chiropractor that's just about to get into school, um, what advice would you give to them? Study philosophy. Uh, that's actually, I forgot to mention one of my favorite people who was a tremendous influence on me was Harris Coulter, C-O-U-L-T-E-R. Coulter wrote Divided Legacy, the difference between chiropractic and medicine, you could say, or vitalism and mechanism. That was a tremendous influence on everything I've written and uh, on KST and the stuff I'm still doing to this day. So, uh, you know, that's what really they have to do and come to a KST seminar. Uh, hopefully they'll be taught and the numbers will be increasing and we are just finishing a new series of live seminars online. So I'll be preserved to posterity. How's that sound? I love it. <clears throat> well, based on that response, um, I know you didn't have anything really favorable to say about the chiropractic colleges or um, the education system right now, but do you think chiropractic students should choose their school based on uh, geographic location? Uh, yeah, if they're close to uh, a pl an airport, absolutely, because then they can go anywhere where there's a decent school. Uh, Sherman and Life appear to be the most philosophical, although I don't think they're that good, uh, not as good as they should be. And uh, I'm really, tr it's, it's disappointing um, to see what's coming out of the schools now. Um, there, the old fire seems to be going. It's, instead, it's replaced by building funds, which are important. Uh, they're trying to start a school in Scotland, which I believe is going to be more philosophically based. And I hope they pull that off in Edinburgh, by the way. Um, and uh, there's not much going on in the chiropractic profession right now. I'm sorry to say, but they have, once if you... Except the medical model, where's the excitement? Where, where's the enthusiasm of changing the world? That's what we used to talk about at Sherman. We're going to change the world. What's happened? Now there's, now there's just a, a non-drug aspirin, who, who, a non-drug painkiller. Who needs that, really? I mean, yeah, non-drug, but still. Um, I, I, the, one, the reason why I started patient education was because people would come in and leave their kids at home. Or the kids who get tonsillectomies or have ear infections or get vaccinated. And I thought, oh, my Lord, this is not what we want. We want to have whole families coming in, embracing uh, a lifestyle of, of uh, healing, true healing, that respects the wisdom of the body and doesn't rely on, on a false idol, a uh, false god, uh, the medical model. So, which has a place, it just should just stay in its place. It's all over the place. That's the problem. We need competition, true health competition in America, just like the competition for ideas, but we need competition in healthcare. And when I said medicine is largely totalitarian, you just have to look at its history. They tried to destroy any competitor, chiropractic, osteopathy, optometry, dentistry, all the MDs want to control or destroy podiatry too, believe it or not. So uh, we have to have real healthcare freedom in America. That existed when D.D. Palmer uh, was discovering chiropractic and Andrew Taylor still discovering osteopathy. They, the, the, the medical licensing laws were pretty much disbanded in almost every state. So that gave people the freedom to, to work on each other to charge, to heal, to be doctors. And American health improved more drastically then than any other time in the world and any other place in the world. America's health uh, improved so dramatically uh, because we were given freedom to choose whatever healing arts we wanted to do to go to. And none of them could try to destroy the other. So you know, if we had more freedom in this country in healthcare, we would all benefit. 
you definitely ca- encapsulate all of my ideas that people think that I'm way off base on. And I, I share freely a lot of the stuff that you are just echoing. And I feel like you're a direct reflection of me, the way that I believe and think. And it's, it's, it's liberating to hear what you share. And it's, it's very free to free to hear because half the time I feel like I'm the one that says the things that you're saying and no one really understands it and they can't really um, comprehend it. But I think that when people realize that we're one of the sickest nations in the world and our health scores are so poor that if we knew how bad it actually was as like our grade, people should be out in the streets causing riots to get our nation more healthy. They should be out there politicking at state capitals to change the paradigm of the way that the health market's being led. And I think those are real national atrocities rather than what we're seeing right now, where people are starting to become this shadow environment of a reality. Um, what you're saying is when those were free market opportunities, health grades were probably very high and, you know, national like responsibility was at an all time high. And now nobody wants to take responsibility for anything. And everybody wants to, to basically hide from, you know, taking action to make things better. And they want somebody to do that for them. They all want somebody else to do it. And I, yeah, your, your, your message is so true and you are right. I do hope that, um, there is a huge wake up call and we can start to peel, peel, peel off some of these layers of confusion. And we come to a state of enlightenment again, where people have freedom of choice and we have the opportunity to raise a better future for chiropractic. Amen. May it happen. Thank you. So our last question here is, what do you like to do for fun? What do you do in your spare time? What are some of your hobbies? Oh, my Lord. It used to be travel until these crazy restrictions came up. Uh, <laughs> I have to fight with anyone if you want to check into a hotel without a mask. Uh, I like I like pia- playing piano. I like music. I like photography. And uh, I, I like writing, not necessarily chiropractic stuff but I've always found writing to be a lot of fun and uh, I like teaching. So it could be any kind of subject. So, uh, and lecturing, standing up in front of an audience and uh, meeting people. One of the best things about teaching uh, around the world was meeting great people such as you guys. So thank you again. What do you like to write? Oh, all, all, all kinds of genres. Uh, Fiction, nonfiction, and uh, things. Uh, I haven't submitted anything. It's my thing. People will find a pile of it one day. <laughs> <laughs> so I have cornspecifictechnique.com. Are there any other websites you want people to know about where they can get if they more go access? To cor- well, cornwellness.com has my corn specific technique site and my blog there and corn publications can be located through there as well. And I just finished a book on cancer. Cancer is natural, so is the cure. And uh, I've written a book on vaccination as well. Very cool. Well, that brings us to the end of this episode. Um, Is there anything else you wanted to say that we didn't ask you about? Not at the moment, but you guys have been great. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. And maybe we'll meet in England again. That would be awesome. Or anywhere else of choice. <laughs> <laughs> well said. Yes. <laughs> and if anyone at home wants to learn how to run a podcast just like us, they can go to chirohustle.com, chirohustlemasterclass.com, take our podcast training, and you could have your own Cairo Hustle. So thank you, Dr. Corin. It's been nice seeing you again. Thank you. And good luck with Cairo Hustle. I wish you great success. Thank you. We're on the journey. Thank you for being on it with us. Thanks. Have a great night now. Thank you. Thank Talk you. to you soon. Yes. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. 
Thanks for listening to Cairo Hustle. Don't forget to subscribe and check back next week to continue hustling.